So you've been around in the high stakes scene for a while. Um, and I don't actually know if I like know how you kind of got your starts playing bigger. Mm. Um, it was 2013. I was coming off of being broke for what I hoped was the last time. Uh, I had a big summer at the World Series, ended up making three final tables, cash for like a half a million. Mm -hmm. And I had roughly half of myself. Um, Sick. Yeah, so it was I, a year prior, I had 300,000. I torched it. I had zero mm -hmm. coming into the start of that year and ended up finding a way back. But in the meantime, I uh, had been playing with Bob Bright for three or four years maybe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he just really enjoys playing cards. He doesn't yeah. really care about the stakes. Yeah. Uh, he enjoys the pain mm -hmm. and he enjoys inflicting the oh, pain. He really enjoys. Yeah. There was a time. So I was on a short leash for the Jeremy game. Um, I sold most of my action, but uh, I, I think I ran like an over pair into his quads. And right before turning over his cards, he says two pair. Yeah. He like, loves this joke. Yeah. <laughs> and I like, like two pair would have beat me anyway. Right, so it didn't matter. Yeah. No, he really enjoys like him announcing two pair is bad, bad news for but you. But I had like, I was on a five buy and leash the entire time I was playing Jeremy's mm. game. So like, terrifying hand all around yeah I, I can definitely relate i think i played that game for seven years never having more than like 15 buy-ins yeah. available <laughs> so it's, it's definitely uh it's it's tough to navigate the high stakes world for sure um but anyway he he enjoyed my action he was always uh basically dangling the carrot on the string in front of me <laughs> knowing that like i'm pretty broke yeah and you know i'm grinding like these five ten games that he comes and plays he's like oh we played this bigger game at aria you're always welcome <laughs> to come sit it's like thanks bob i would love to and i was like very yeah. egotistical too like i sure. i didn't want to admit that i was broke mm. so i'm just like oh yeah sometime someday uh and then i had a big summer and he was like you know we still have those seats and i was like well <laughs> I'll take you up on that if you yeah. if you're being genuine. Mm -hmm. um, so he got me in. First, the first time I played was something out of a nightmare. Mm -hmm. It was a six-handed game. The game was like super soft. It was uh, people who weren't even really regs. It was like Bob, JRB, um, and then a handful of others that mm -hmm. just kind of dabble. Alan Richardson being one of them. You say this, but like I don't. This to me does not sound like a soft game, and this perhaps like speaks more to the disparity in like our skill level. Mm. But I do not look at like Bob Wright, JRB, and like Alan Richardson and think like, oh wow, that's an incredible game. I mean, I was thirty three at the time and the youngest player at the table by like. 10 years sure but if anything what that means is these people have all been able to either make a living playing poker or afford playing poker for debt like yeah the latter <laughs> i mean that's why we're here <laughs> it's literally why we're here but uh richardson walks in with lisa hamilton who i had known for a very long time mm -hmm. and he sees me sitting there and he's like who's this i'm like hi Matt, Lisa, how's it going? Did he interrogate people even back then? Oh, God, yeah. He's, he's been... <laughs> the funny thing is, too, it's like, JRB had no idea who I was. He, I, yeah. was I was sold to him as like a 2-5 kid, sure. which wasn't that far off from the truth. Yeah. Uh, and he had probably known Richardson for half a decade at that point. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, shut up, Alan. <laughs> No, JRB and Alan have such different ways of vetting people. Like, yeah. whenever anyone new comes in, like, Alan asks them, like, what's your name? Where are you from? What do you do? Do you have a business card? Yeah, like, yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, he came back in, like, 20 minutes later and gave a printed out copy of my Hendon mod <laughs> to JRB, which also wasn't impressive <laughs> at That's all. That's incredible. Uh, and... Jeremy was just like cracking jokes about it. Um, but then on top of that, uh, we're like halfway through the session. And to, to, to tell you like how different this game was and like how quote unquote elderly it was, mm -hmm. we literally broke like three hours in to go get dinner. Like w they didn't have food delivered. Everybody just was like, hey, let's, let's all go to John George. <laughs> yeah. So we're getting ready to leave and I'm walking out and I have my mm -hmm. book bag with me. And at the time I was just a grinder. Like I was used to bringing my own food. Yeah. And I packed the thermos full of homemade chili. <laughs> and for whatever reason, I must have like packed it too hot. Uh-huh. And the, the seal 
the seal must have like broke from the steam oh, and it just no. explodes in my book bag. Like sounds like a bomb going off. <laughs> I'm mortified. Like it sounds like it sounds like, you know, I'm I'm basically trying to take the aria down there. <laughs> Ready to call security on me. And Jeremy looks at me and goes, What the fuck was that? I'm like, In case I lost. <laughs> I'm like, I, I have chili in my book bag and yeah. it, it exploded. Oh. It's like, You don't need to bring food. I'm like, I understand that now. I'm just trying to fit in, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, we were playing 200, 400. Then within mm. a couple of weeks, it turned to 3612. And I was lucky enough to find backing and stick yeah. around for, better part of a decade. That's awesome. Um, so what was the biggest you had played prior to? 2550. Wow. That's yeah. a nice 8X increase in stakes. Yeah. Yeah, it was, and I had a lot of myself in that first 2-4 game. I think I had like 70%. Mm -hmm. um, I was just firing, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I've, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you understand. <laughs> I've been there. Um, one of the things I actually want to talk to you about, so. I was going to ask if you've ever felt the way I felt where I was playing a game that started off as quarter 50. Mm -hmm. I come back from a like two week long vacation. It's now playing 200, 400. I have 100K to my name and it's just like I sell half. I take 50% of myself and it's like, fuck it. Like I'm going for it. Had I not won that session, we probably would not be here now. Like they yeah. would not have seen me again. Um, yeah. I didn't have it to that degree because mm -hmm. uh, when I was your age, you know, 510 uncapped was big mm -hmm. and I was dealing with way less than 100k uh, I didn't have my first 100k roll until I was like 28 I think mm -hmm. 29 maybe um, but I had a lot of like 50k rolls along the way that I torched basically doing exactly what yeah. you're describing uh, what, the, the the funny thing of, of risk of ruin mm -hmm. is that we as humans don't really understand how numbers compound and if you are taking on like 25% risk of ruin once that's oh, fine. yeah. You're, you're probably fine. You know, 75% yeah. of the time you're going to make it. For sure. But if you just do it every time you yeah. sit down, eventually it catches up and it's inevitable that you're just going to go broke. And I learned that kind of the hard way, I would say. Same. Um, but, you know, when you're young, you should yeah. do that. I think so, too. Yeah. I, I think you can afford to be super risk on because you don't have any obligations. And all, Yeah. Also, yeah. It like, forces you to figure out if this is actually what you want to pursue. Like, yeah. You don't just find success in some sort of career path because you get lucky enough to be good at it and suffer no negative variance and yeah. like have all the doors open for you, whatever. Like you'll just grow so bored of that. Yeah. Right. You kind of have to struggle through something mm -hmm. and prove to yourself like this is actually worth pursuing. 